So why is cognitive and behavioral therapy for insomnia by far the first line gold standard treatment for chronic insomnia currently? I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health. So insomnia disorder or chronic insomnia is one's difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, not getting back to sleep during the night that lasts for many weeks, months, or years. So for a chronic time period. And the gold standard of treatment, according to research studies over many years now, is cognitive and behavioral therapy for insomnia, also called CBTI. So cognitive and behavioral therapy, it's not a medication, it's not a procedure. It's a set of sessions done with a clinician to get people with insomnia to think differently about their sleep, approach their sleep in a different pattern. And this involves changes to cognition, changes to behaviors when it comes to sleep. So why is this so much more effective than things like medications? Numerous studies in many countries, in patients with many different disorders, whether it's depression or anxiety, other health problems, show that this type of therapy is far more effective long-term than any other treatment. Well, there are two main components to sleep from a physical standpoint. The first is the homeostatic sleep drive, and the second is the circadian rhythm. And the homeostatic sleep drive, think of it as your fuel to sleep at night. So for, to sleep seven hours through the night, you actually have to be awake for 17 hours. You've got to build up that drive to sleep through the night. But it also has to be the right time of day or night in order to sleep at usually with a lot of consistency in the sleep pattern. And this is called the circadian rhythm or think of it as the biological clock. And these two physical components have to align very well to sleep well through the night. And if these two components are badly interfered with, it's gonna be very hard to sleep no matter what substance or thing you do to the body or the brain. On top of the physical components, however, is what we call a psychophysiological component, where even if you line up these physical components perfectly, the brain, the mind, can still overcome the components. And why is that? Well, that's evolutionary. We evolved the ability to keep ourselves awake, but we did not evolve the ability to put ourselves to sleep with our mind. We need those physical components to be in place, but Historically, if we needed to forage for food or we needed to fight off an attacking animal, we had to be able to wake ourselves up in order to run away or fight off that bear that's attacking you in the cave. So these are ingrained in our natural ability to sleep or stay awake. But in modern times, we're not as much worried about the bear coming to our cave, but it's other things in, on our mind that seem to interfere with sleep. And that can include different types of work or family stress. It can include anxieties over various things, but it could also include excessive thinking about sleep itself. So sleep is one of those things where you have to have a complete deactivation of the mind to allow those physical components to take shape. And that's where cognitive and behavioral therapy can address these things. It can change the behaviors, it can change the mindset towards sleep, and get the mind to shut off at night and allow those physical components to be optimized to the greatest extent. Substances do not work very well for this because they basically work by causing drowsiness. If the brain is drowsy, the physical components can come out and one can fall asleep, but we actually don't have any medications that can really put people to sleep. We could make people very sleepy or put them under anesthesia, but they're not asleep. And that's why cognitive and behavioral therapy will work long term, because once the brain or the mind overcomes the physical drowsiness caused by a supplement or a medication, the other problems, whether it's physical or psychophysiological, are still there. And once they're, they overcome the drug effect, the drug becomes no longer effective, particularly in the long term. So this is addressed through sessions basically 45 minute, one hour sessions with a therapist for anywhere from five to seven sessions, depending on the individual. 
Now, this therapy is actually very hard to find. Unfortunately, due to lack of insurance reimbursement, most physicians who are sleep specialists do not offer cognitive and behavioral therapy themselves, even though they are specialists. They have to outsource it to other providers, including clinical psychologists, therapists, and social workers. And these groups of people can do a wonderful job in therapy, but sometimes it can be very hard to find, and there's a wide shortage of providers throughout the United States as well as the world. But this is worth looking into and trying hard to find this help if you have chronic insomnia. There are also a lot of apps on phone or tablet or computer that can provide cognitive and behavioral therapy either, either with a, a provider on the other end or through standardized modules. And this has been shown to be almost as effective as one-on-one -on -one or group cognitive and behavioral therapy that is done live with a clinician. So it is key to finding this therapy. Don't resort to that supplement or sleeping pill. It will not be effective. Both the physical and the psychophysiological components have to be addressed, and they should be addressed through cognitive and behavioral therapy for insomnia. As always, these videos are for general informational purposes only. They do not constitute the practice of medicine. All of these medical decisions should be made under the guidance of a licensed clinician. And as always, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.